thanks for your presence. Welcome to all of you. We're here to commemorate the Hall Building as a historic site of student protest. It's a follow-up to the task force recommendations. It took place on October 28th, 2022. There's a before October 28th, and there's an after October 28th. Considering why we're here, I'm going to suggest in solidarity with indigenous peoples that we all take a couple of moments just to think about our relationship to this land and to this site before we focus on the hall building itself and the struggles against anti-black racism that took place here. Thank you, and I don't have to emphasize that without the struggles of indigenous peoples, we wouldn't be here at all. This is Black History Month. It's also the week of February 11th, and as I mentioned, there's a before October 28th, so the launch of the final report of the Task Force on Anti-Black Racism, and there's an after October 28th. After October 28th, the date of February 11th, 1969, cannot go unacknowledged. So that explains the reason we've come together this week um, to unveil and to talk about a little bit where the, we're at with task force recommendations. So even if the plaque is not yet on a wall, even if other elements of the recommendations that Anne and Graham will refer to are not yet complete, it's important that we acknowledge them this week. There'll be more celebrations to come when the permanent versions are ready. I'm gonna pass the mic to our president, Graham Carr. Bonjour tout le monde. Je suis très content de, de vous voir, de vous accueillir encore cet après-midi. Angelique, should we unveil? Do it, yeah. do, it do it, do it. Yes, it will sit there, and um, I want to say a, a little bit about why it will sit there in a moment. Um, but first of all, I want to thank again all the members of the task force and the community who have worked so hard to get us to this point. And it's just one more point. Uh, there's a lot of road still to uh, still to travel, and uh, we had a number of discussions about uh, when to reveal the plaque and where to locate the plaque. And uh, as Angelique has already explained, we felt it was critically important to do it this week, uh, the week of the uh, 11th of February. And we chose this location. We discussed doing it on the ninth floor of, uh, of this building, which would have made sense because that was the site of the computer event. But um, this location is in the most high volume location on campus. And I just wanted to say uh, a word or two about plaques. You know, plaques are meant um, to convey to people who may have no understanding of a past event or may have some understanding or may feel they have a very complete understanding of a past event, something about place, about people, about time, about a moment, an event in history. And ideally, what plaques do is inspire people who know nothing to learn more, or inspire people who know something about an event to reflect a little more deeply about what the meaning of that event may be. And I'm sure that will be the case as people look at this plaque not just this year or next year, but five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. We're also creating 
uh, a website, an interactive website, which is available in, in both French and English. And we're expecting that people will want to feed in their memories, their souvenir of the event, their thoughts about the event, uh, offer up you know, documents and memento and things that we can, can use to help curate that website over time. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Anne. Thank you, Graham. So this plaque and the website chronicling the relationship between Concordia, its founding institutions, and black communities in Montreal and beyond are two examples of recommendations that are either completed or are under, on their way to being completed. A process is also underway to start building a program in black and diasporic studies in the Canadian context and others. In that spirit, I'm pleased to announce that we are moving forward on the recommendation to create a Black Student Centre. <laughs> Working in dialogue and in partnership with the Student Success Centre, the Black Student Centre will be a gathering place for Black undergraduates and graduates from across the university. Opening in fall 2023 and housed in the Student Success Centre, the space will be open throughout the week and will have computers, coffee and tea, an academic counsellor and culturally relevant programming. It will also build on the student-focused programming now being offered through the Black Perspectives Office. I'm also pleased to announce the launch of a survey and a contest to find a name for the Black Student Centre. Details are currently on the Black Perspectives Office website, and there are some great prizes, really great prizes, for the top three selected entries, as well as opportunities for students to weigh in on the design and amenities of the space. So for any students here, go on the website, enter, be creative, make some suggestions. Um, they will be gathered. And then finally, because I want to keep my remarks very short, I'd like to take this opportunity to once again thank Angelique for not only for her work in leading the task force, but for her continuous energy and really energy, this woman is unstoppable, in reviewing and planning the implementation of its recommendations. So thank you very much. Thank you, Angelique. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Anne.